Welcome, I'm Hannes Fessmann and I want to give you a short introduction about the art and work I'm doing since now 20 years. It's about stone and sound, how to get out beautiful sounds out of rough material. A brief intro into the ancient history of stone and sound. Ian Cross, he's music professor at Cambridge University, he holds up the theory that Pieces of stone that are displayed in archaeological museums were in ancient times used for musical purposes. Put on two strings, they are perfectly pitched and sound beautiful. China, India and Persia share the richest history of stone and sound in the world. The modern history of sound and stone is for me divided in two parts. The first part is the sculpture way, represented by Elmar Daucher. The second part, the musical way, is represented by Professor Klaus Festmann. Sadly, Elmar Daucher died in 1989. He couldn't finish his work. My father, an avant-garde musician working on the edge of sound and graphic, stepped over the phenomena and couldn't let go. So I became part of this whole adventure of stone and sound on an early age. In the beginning of the 90s, my father, Professor Klaus Fessmann, and I drove to the Swiss Alp to collect these stones. You hardly have any sound. Rubbing is really difficult. Here there's nothing. In this one, you hear a little bit. But it's not much fun playing. This one is a phonolite, having already a little sound. These are the developments of Professor Klaus Fessmann. The steel out of granite from Iran, a square out of gabbro, and a small steel out of serpentine. Each different sound, different sound. This is the serpentine, already quite clear in sound, but you have difficulties playing it. This is the square out of Gabro. This is the steel. The steel has a variety of sound and possibilities playing it. You can play it in this direction as well as in this. 
has a middle tone like this, but also a high one. Or really deep. As deep, you almost can't hear it. But you can see the sound. After all rectangular shapes, I thought we should have round shapes. And my first idea was the egg. This is the tulip. I made it in 2007. It's the first natural form and one of the best stones I've ever found. I played it in many concerts. People love to listen. In 2007, I took an idea of my father, redeveloped it, and out came the partner stone. You can sit on each side, play, feel the vibration on the other side, communicate. It's used in the therapy after Professor Fessmann and Dr. Runge. This is the standard model 60kg. It's one of the most practical stones. On the top you play the deep tones. And because of the circle you easily go to the side and can play the high tones. It is widely used in therapy because for example patients can adapt their hand to the round edge. That wouldn't be possible if there's a flat surface. Also, vibration can be put in the body through leaving the hand on top of the stone. This is the standard model 40 kg. The best choice for private use. Because of the hole you can lift it easily you have really good deep sound for that size because normally the smaller you go, the higher you get. Beautiful high tones. By only having 40 kilograms to carry around in a case. This is my most loved music instrument. It has a whole variety of sounds, like probably for this size the most sounds, and it's from deep to very high.
So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. This video should be the starting point of a whole series of videos and leading to an experienced world of sound and stone in the internet. You got the overview about the present and the past. There's a lot to come in the future. I hope you will enjoy and look it up. Thank you.